Well, hello everyone and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. You guys did be proud. I asked for 25 likes. I got 26. Thank you so very much. So here's an extra episode. That's two this week. And I'm going to make the same deal. If you guys give me 25 likes by Tuesday evening at my time, I'll make another episode of this. So we keep this up. We can do two episodes of this a week. And now... We're just about to head off to the old camp with the lovely Lena. Sure, if it's not too far. So, you do want to go? Of course I don't. We can, if it's just there and back, quickly. Okay. Lena smiled and gave me a flashlight, which appeared from nowhere. Ooh, uh, yes, that'll be useful. Does that mean she prepared beforehand? And was nothing up to me? And where did she keep a pocket in that skirt? I sighed as if doomed and headed to the forest with her. Night fell on the camp. Fortunately, we weren't in it. It was still daytime. We walked slowly. Lena was next to me, near, but not too close. It was strange, but it looked like she wasn't afraid of anything. Moreover, she didn't seem to be bothered much about what we were doing, as if we weren't walking in the forest at night, but just watching a movie with other people lead playing leading roles. Actually, Electrolix said that the old camp's not too far, and if we walk straight to it, then it won't be too hard to get lost. After a few minutes, I was completely unsure that we were walking straight, and after a few more, it started to seem that it would be a miracle for us to even get out of here. Me alone in the forest at night with Lena Ur. But I didn't want to lose face before Lena, so I tried to walk cheerfully. The forest was full of silent, flickering shadows and gleaming moonbeams. The grass quietly rustled under our feet, and the branches rustled over our heads. Old oaks stood next to young birches. Large mushrooms emerged from under the latter and scampered off into the distance, as if taking off their large hats in salute. On any other day, or rather, on any other time of the day, it would have looked really beautiful. It might be safe at night too, but nevertheless, I shuddered at each gust of wind. Look! Lena fo pointed forward. I rubbed my eyes and saw a gap between the trees. In a minute, we were in a rather large clearing. In the middle of it stood a building, which looked like a village school or a kindergarten. The paint was falling off the walls. There were several holes in the roof, like the aftermath of a bombing, and the glassless windows looked at us sadly and a little threateningly. It was not a very pleasant sight. But I've seen Electronic now with his shirt off. I think I'm immune to about anything. I couldn't remember how I'd imagined this place a moment ago. It was like all the images had been erased from my memory, replaced by this depressing graveyard view. Well, it's creepy. Lena was standing still silently, but a natural expression of fright appeared on her face. Do you think he's in there? I have no idea. If I was Shurik, then a haunted house would be the last place I'd hide in. Shall we go? And with that, she faded from sight. I didn't manage to answer. The moon appeared from behind the clouds and illuminated the clearing with new colours. Actually, in one colour. The white of the grave. I could see more clearly the distant trees, the mists surrounding them. It felt like the temperature had dropped several degrees, making me shiver. Are you afraid? said Lena, quickly coming back into view. Lena asked calmly, honestly? She smiled almost imperceptibly and took my hand. It would have caused a storm of emotions in any other situation, but at that time it felt like a basic necessity. We slowly walked into the building. Thank <laughs> you. 
Walking through the playground, I pushed a merry-go-round, causing it to creak nastily as it made half a turn. Lena shivered, shivered and grasped my hand tighter. Sorry, I probably just remembered my childhood. Did you like merry-go-rounds? Yes. Actually, I don't know. I don't remember. Probably. All children do like them. I didn't like them. Why? I got dizzy when I rode on them. No wonder if you spin too fast. I like swings more. Well, you can get dizzy on a swing as well. But why would you? I don't know. That conversation had distracted me a little and I stopped worrying myself about everything. About Shurik. About our night trip. About Lena. After all, this world is not so alien. Finally, we reached the doors. The inside of the old camp... I'll oh, stop it here. In the inside of the old camp building reminded me of a kindergarten. The one I had attended in my childhood. At first glance, even the room arrangement was the same. Shurik! Shurik! Grave-like silence replied to us. Even the wind outside had calmed down. Looks like nobody is here. We should check, anyway. Lena's courage still didn't cease to surprise me. Or, should I say... Her lack of normal self-preservation instincts didn't. I don't know if this behaviour is strange for this girl or not. Okay, let's do it. We thoroughly examined all the rooms of the old camp. I even expected the attic. There were signs that people had visited the place everywhere. Newspapers, empty bottles and other garbage. But there was no sign of Shurik. We returned to the hall where we had started our search. What should we do next? I have no idea. Lena sat on the steps and stared at her feet. I think we should go back, I began carefully. It's late and... Can just the two of us really search the entire forest for him? You may be right. She looked sad, and her expression let me know that the search was not over yet. Well, I am. I waved my hands in resignation and sat next to her. We should think about the worst outcome. Are you saying? No, but are there any wild animals around? Only you, Lana. Lena calmed down at once. He may be sleeping somewhere. He'll wake up in the morning and return to the camp. Yes, of course. I jumped to my feet and started to walk in circles around the hall. I really wanted to leave this place, to get out from the forest, but it was as if Lena's behavior was keeping me here. Yes, her behavior. I wanted to go on trying to persuade her, but then I noticed something on the floor. It was a trap door. There were little heaps of garbage and dust around it. It must have been opened recently. Look. Do you think Shurik is there? Lena squatted carefully and pulled on the hatch's handle. It might not be Shurik, but someone surely, Shurikly, has used it recently. I'd already regretted finding that damn gate to hell. Let's check it out. The trapdoor wasn't very heavy, so you could open it without much effort. I directed the flashlight into it and saw a ladder going down a couple of meters. Looks like a cellar. Let's go down. I looked at Lena for a few moments trying to understand what was on her mind. Did she have a craving for adventure like Yolana? So where is her youthful spirit then? Or maybe she just went a bit nuts. Lena didn't seem like a crazy person. But anyway. Who even said she really is human, and you and you can evaluate her with human behavioural logic? That short sh thought should have scared me, but somehow I didn't pay any attention among the millions of other thoughts. Some of them were more important. For example, what could be down there? I climbed down and looked around. Everything's okay! 
After I made sure there was nothing to be afraid of, I called Lena. We stood in the long corridor, which certainly wasn't a cellar. Its architecture more resembled KGB dungeons or a subway maintenance tunnel. I don't know which would be better. There were countless wires among the walls, fastened by metal hooks every half a metre. There were lamps under the ceiling, covered by rusted shades. Crumbled concrete crunched under our feet unpleasantly. Shall we go? Lena, without any emotion. Where to? There? Well, yes. What if Shurik is there? What would we be doing there? In any case... I wasn't really able to refuse her today, so we forgot about our fear and headed into the darkness. He. Lena walked next to me, holding my hand. The silence of the dungeon was interrupted only by the sound of our steps and water dripping from the ceiling. We moved forward slowly, maybe too slowly. I was suddenly I suddenly found a surge of claustrophobia. I gritted my teeth and squeezed the torch, but loosened my grip at once, fearful of breaking our only source of light. Lena kept silent, and her silence seemed louder than any words. I started to fear. Say something. Door. What? There's a door. She pointed forward. We came to a massive metal door with a biohazard sign. Looks like, um, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> looks like a bomb shelter. Yes, I'd heard something about it. Why is it here? I have no idea. Maybe because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuban? I estimated the approximate time of constructing the camps. Makes sense. Moreover, building a bomb shelter here was like building an airport at Faggot in Northumberland or Laycock in Wiltshire in the UK. It wasn't deep enough and too far from civilization. The door wheel duly creaked. I'd push it with all my strength before it turned a couple of times. I made up my mind and opened the door with difficulty. We entered the room which seemed to be the main living quarters. There were even some beds cases, some scientific equipment. They had been thoroughly prepared for a nuclear apocalypse. We didn't find any signs of Shurik there, though. Look. Lena was holding a flare gun and smiling. Why would I need it? To fight monsters. There are no monsters here. At least, that's what I wanted to believe. If you say so. I guarantee it. I didn't want to upset her, so I tucked the flare gun into my belt. It might come in handy. We thoroughly searched the room once again. There were two exits. The first was the door we had entered, and the other one was another door exactly the same in the left wall. For a moment I felt excited, the urge to reach the end of this labyrinth and to learn what prize awaited me there. However, this surely wasn't a computer game and there is no option to save. Maybe with this? Lena offered me a rather big crowbar. I'm not even going to ask where she was keeping it. No, I'll give it a try without it first. However, the door didn't want to budge. It only creaked nastily and the door wheel didn't turn a millimeter. Okay, give it to me. And then give me the crowbar. It was too easy with the crowbar. In the end, the obstacle, obstacle collapsed, hitting the floor loudly. The hinges were rusted completely through. I pointed the flashlight into the passageway. There was a corridor just like the one we had come through. Let's go? It was like Lena was constantly driving me on. Where are you rushing to? Me? I'm not. She blushed in confusion. Again. What should I make of her? First she doesn't fear a thing, then she gets lost after a word. You look like you don't fear anything. I don't know. What should I fear? 
You will protect me anyway. She laughed, she added, barely audibly. So Lena is counting on me. She believes in me, no matter what. It's possible. Stupid. Naive. But possible. I knew clearly that I couldn't protect anyone, even myself. Nothing is up to me in this world. The powers that brought me here could do anything. That didn't exactly mean that inevitable death awaited me at the end of the tunnel. It could be lying in wait anywhere in this camp. Let's go. I tried to walk faster, but Lena seemed to be not bothered by that and she easily kept pace with me. The corridor was exactly the same as the previous one, in every last detail. There was nothing shocking about it. Graphics budgets are what they are, but at some point I got the feeling that we were walking in circles. The flashlight in my hand started to tremble visibly. The spot of light jumped over the walls and the floor and suddenly it lit up a rather big hole. The hole wasn't too deep, and down below we could see rails. What's down there? Rails. Looks like a mine. Shall we have a look? Why not go further along the corridor? I don't know. I think we should go down there. I estimated the height. It would be possible to pull ourselves out. Okay, let's check it out. I jumped down the hole and helped Lena to get down. It really was a mine. I wonder what they could have mined here. What, what minerals are there in this area? I don't know. Well, yeah, stupid question. Looks like there are none now. We headed into the darkness. It was hard to walk because I couldn't choose where I trod. Wobbly wooden planks or uneven ground. I wasn't able to stick close to the walls either. The narrowness of the tunnel forced us to stay between the rails and I didn't want to let go of Lena's hand. Finally, we reached a fork. Just great. Where should we go? Where? I'm not certain we'll be able to get out of here at all, especially if we're going to play Pac-Man. Play what? Never mind. We'll get lost. What if there is an exit too? There may be one. And what if there isn't? So, we should go back? I bit my lip and ye until it bled and yelled as loud as I could. Sherrick! The loud echo rebounded from every direction at once. Soil even fell from the ceiling in some places. See? Then I will go on alone. What? I grinned stupidly. Alone? Where to? We must find Shurik. He, he may be. Lena blushed at once and stared at the ground. No, 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 no. That won't do. If we go, we go together. Okay, let's go. She smiled and took my hand. How does she manage that? But first we should... I took a sharp stone from the ground and scratched a cross on one of the beams which supported the walls. Now we'll know where we started. Ooh. Let's go right. It seems there is another fork in the road. Let's go right. It seems there is another fork in the road. Let's go right again. Finally, the tunnel led us to a hall with a high ceiling. Though it could hardly be called a hall, it seemed like something was mined here. Maybe coal or gold. The walls had been cut by pickaxes or pneumatic drills. The place was pitch black, so our only salvation was the flashlight. If it breaks, it's unlikely we'll ever get out of here. I noticed a red piece of cloth in its light. It was a pioneer neckchief. Shurik was obviously here somewhere, or at least his neck was. Shurik! 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 Only echoes answered us. Not here, not here, not here. He must not be too far away since we found his, the scarf here. 
and everyone knows that a pioneer can't go too far from his scarf. Frankly speaking, I was mostly wondering where the here actually was. Where could he have gone from here? There were no other exits from this room. Certainly it was possible that there were other places in these tunnels that we hadn't visited yet. That means we have to keep searching for him. It seems there's another fork in the road. I, if we go right... Okay, so I'm assuming we went back... For, oh, what the heck. Let's go right. There's another fork in the road. Go right. Another fork in the road. Go right. Around the next turn, a wooden door appeared in the light. At least it's something. What? At least it's not another fork. What's in there? I forking well don't know. No, I'm sorry about that one. Um, we don't have any choice but to check it out. I strongly pulled on the handle and opened the door. There was a room behind it, which might be one of the maintenance rooms for the bomb shelter. Empty bottles and cigarette butts were scattered everywhere. The walls were covered with scribbles. So that means there was another exit from here. I didn't want to believe that the people had left all that had come the same way as we did. Sadly, Shurik wasn't here. Oh. I sit, slid down the wall to the floor. We must have been everywhere now. Not everywhere. Lena pointed to a door in the corner. It looked similar to the one leading into the bomb shelter. There probably should be an exit, as you said. Shall we go? Let's rest for a moment. Okay. Lena sat down next to me, very close, and took my hand. It's all right. What do you mean? That we haven't found Shurik. We should think about getting out ourselves. We'll get out. Yes, I probably remember the way. At least I thought that I remembered it. I'm not afraid at all. She suddenly said after a short pause. That's good. Because I'm with you. Suddenly there came a noise from behind the door to the mine. I jumped up at once and started looking for something I could use as a weapon. Unfortunately, the only blunt instrument in the room was Lena. The noise of heavy footsteps was getting closer. Finally, the door opened and Shurik appeared from behind it. In the silence, I froze, staring at him. There you are! Did you think you could hide from me? What? Did you think I wouldn't find you? But I did. He wasn't sane, that was for sure. His face was distorted by a scary grimace. His eyes gleamed behind his glasses. The missing pioneer held a metal rod in his hand. Are you mad? It's us! Yes, I can see it's you! He took a couple of steps towards us. I instinctively shielded Lena. Do you think you could make a fool of me, leading me here and there, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right? And I followed, I followed. He raised the metal rod. Everything after that was like it happened in slow motion. Shurik charging at us, me pushing Lena out of the way, the rod slowly arcing towards my head, my hand with the flashlight going up. Lena's incredible ninja skills. Following all that, complete darkness. Rapid breathing. Blood hammering in my temples. Silence. Dreadful, heavy silence. Merging with the darkness. I moved my hand, trying to find the wall. When I found someone's touch. Don't be afraid. Please move your hand from that. I heard a familiar voice near me. Where are you, you damned lunatic? I shouted. He left. Which way did he go? Where to? Lena's voice didn't sound too calm, but certainly it didn't sound like it should in such circumstances. Calm down. She hugged me tenderly and pressed her body against mine. I tried to gather my senses, to recover my breath, 
to adapt to the darkness, to remove my hands from her buttocks. What should we do next? You have a gun. Well, who do I shoot? It's loaded with a flare. She might be right. I took the gun from my belt, pointed it to the side and fired. The room was illuminated by a bright red light. The flare lying in the corner looked like a firework or a sparkler. Let's go quickly. It won't burn for too long. Where to? Lena pointed to the second door. It wasn't hard to open it, and we headed into the darkness. The flare burned more dimly with every second. I stumbled with every step, even fell down a couple of times, but didn't slow my pace. If it goes out... Finally we saw light in front of us and, we, and came to a ladder, leading to a grating in the ceiling. The fire hissed and went out. Thank God. It turned out that we were right under the statue of gender. The grating... Excuse me. The grating was rather sturdy but we managed to open it after breaking the bolts with the flashlight. After reaching the surface, I collapsed on the grass, exhausted. That was terrible. Lena sat next to me. Just dreadful. By that time, I didn't give a damn about the world, the camp, the 410 bus, or my previous life. The strongest and nastiest thing that there was nothing supernatural in these events. Shurik just went crazy. Insane. Nothing strange about it. I would have too in his position. Lena patted my head tenderly and smiled. It's all over now. I don't know. There's a crazy pioneer in the woods. You could even say a maniac killer. I think he's going to be alright. Alright? I'm not sure about that. The most important thing is that we're okay. She still smiled. How can you be so calm? I do told you before that I have nothing to be afraid of when I'm with you. Indeed, I might have saved Lena and, Lena and myself back there. But it was by chance, nothing more. If Shurik had been swifter, or crazier. Thanks for the compliment. You're welcome. Though, we still should have stayed here in the first place. You're probably right, she said calmly. I got really sleepy. Because of stress, of exhaustion, of how late at night it was. We should go to sleep. But I'd have to stand up and walk to the leader's cabin. I wasn't ready for that. My eyes closed, just for a moment. Stars looked down at me from the sky. Thousands of them. Even millions. Now their light didn't seem so distant and cold. On the contrary, they twinkled at me as if whispering amongst themselves, telling merry fairy tales in eager competition. About a galaxy far, far away, and violent, fluffy piglets about mysterious asteroid belts where ships have disappeared, about a fearless starship captain and his brave crew, about exceptional treasures and unreachable peaks of a planet on the edge of the universe. I wonder, is that a dream? Well, this 25-minute episode has gone on to 30 minutes, but I think I'm going to finish this off. I lifted myself a little and realised that my head was in Lena's lap. Did I sleep long? I asked in confusion, but didn't rush to get up. I don't know. I don't have a watch. She laughed. Approximately? Well, maybe 20 minutes. Ah, that's okay then. I lay down again, feeling nice and calm like never before. The events of the night were becoming distant, as if I was starting to forget them, like the story the stars were telling me. 
Shurik has come back. What? I jumped to my feet instantly. There he is, sleeping on the bench. Lena pointed to the benches in surprise. And what are you... You were so, sleeping so peacefully that I didn't want to wake you up. I felt a shiver of fear, because such behaviour was not just strange. It was not just inappropriate. It seemed to me more than Shurik's insanity in the dungeon. A lunatic who half an hour ago tried to kill us arrives, lies on a nearby bench and falls asleep, and she just sits there. Nothing to worry about. You just seemed a little off. Lena got confused and blushed. He walked unsteadily and didn't look towards us, and if I'd made a noise... She was about to cry. Okay, don't worry. There was some logic in her words. She probably did the right thing. In any case, we had to interrogate Shurik thoroughly. I jumped up, walked quickly to the bench that she, he was sleeping on, and slapped him. Okay, we're going to stop there. And we will find out just what happened to Shurik in the next episode. Now, same deal. Give me 25 likes of this episode and I will do another episode on Tuesday. Keep this up. Two episodes of this every single week. And i got to be honest with you, I love this game. I stumbled on it by accident and I'm so glad that I did. So, until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been everlasting summer. Thank you, and good night. Thank you.